Mr. Mutchler. I'm trying to think. Ten years from now is the ch next Charter Review Commission. Um, Joe Allenbaugh will be 112 in his 14th <laughs> term. I, I'm 55. I don't know if I'll do it. But um, it occurs to me this is not necessary this year. I want to suggest that um, you may have an overload of amendments with what the Commission has done and what you're bringing forth. It's like going to school. I remember one quarter I tried to take 27 units. I thought I could do it. It was overload. And there's only so much the voters should have to handle. Ten years from now, the Commission meets. You've got ten years to put this on the ballot. I think it would be better, more prudent for everybody's reasons just to wait on this one. But I will speak directly against the idea. I find it troublesome. Currently, we uh, vote by district only for the Charter Review Commission, uh, which means the districts, the area of responsibility for elections is one, -fifth the si or one third the size. I guess it would be one fifth the size if five districts are chosen by the voters later on. That allows obscure individuals like Eli Makovitz, Cliff, God bless his 30 seconds of silence, Langley, Wes Kinch, Ellie Walker, people I had never heard of before. I, I, I had never heard of these folks before I got to meet them. They got to fight for a can and campaign for a seat on the Charter Review Commission. Now, I got elected in the third district. I came in fourth. Wasn't a few more votes, I wouldn't be here tonight. I remember campaigning from Lummi Island through Lummi Nation all the way up to Point Roberts more than once. That was a lot for me. I can't imagine having to add to that Sumas, Sudden Valley, Fairhaven, Cordata, Maple Falls, Demi, not on the $1,500 total that I was able to raise. Not for something, a position that's not paid for nine months. It's my concern that if you pass this on, if it, and if it passes, that you'll make the Charter Review Commission voting district, uh, if you make it district-wide, that you'll cut out the average Joe and Jane citizen from running, and you relegate this whole important process to, of democracy to the political class and to the deep pockets and to the special interest groups. It's tempting to try to fix them that you maybe have problems with what we've done this year. I don't think there has been a problem. I think it's been a good process, and I think that you've, by doing this, you've drastically changed the nature of the Charter Review Commission again to the political class. It's going to. It, I, I noticed. I looked thirty up today seconds, the, please. I looked up today on the PDC website. There were 55 or 60 people that ran for the Charter Review Commission. Not one of them filed the long form. You and I know what that means. It means they spent all of them less than $5,000. I'm convinced that if we go with this direction, it becomes district-wide. It's going to be the deep pockets and the special interests that will be, get behind this election. It's just not a good idea. If you think it's a good idea, you don't have to do it this year. Overload. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Eric Brissant, Kai Bresham, Carl Upiano, and Bob Burr. No one else? Anybody else that wants to speak? Bob, go ahead. No, Carl's there. Bob Burr, Bellingham, and I will be uncharacteristically brief. Uh, I don't know whether I favor the idea of district only or general county-wide voting for the charter review. But I do know that between now and election time, the, uh, the working press will inform me on these issues and allow me to make a decision. In the meantime, I ask you to let me make that decision come November. Again, we are trying to bring democracy down to the people. Thank you. Richard Casper from, from, Benton, or from Bellingham, previously Bettendorf. Anyway, uh, I was wondering who in the right mind uh, put this proposal, well, I shouldn't say, retract that. Had anybody who proposed this actually looked at the last ballot? I found the ballot to elect the commissioners to be onerous. Uh, I, granted, I've only been here for less than a year, but to try and glean some information about people on the other end of the county was uh, nearly impossible. And so 
for the interest of the voter to try and make intelligent decisions about f folks on the, uh, in an area of the county that he knows nothing about, I think is ridiculous. I'm, I would oppose, be opposed to that amendment. Thank you. Well, as I mentioned earlier, good evening, Carl Lupiano. As I mentioned earlier, um, I campaigned for a position on the Charter Review Commission, and uh, I can't imagine having to personally finance my campaign and manage to cover the entire county, I, although I guess you've been able to do it. Um, but as, a, as a, uh, an individual citizen, um, I think it makes it really tough. And what happens when you go to a uh, county-wide setup is it just raises the barrier to entry for people that would otherwise be able to do something like this. Now, I think there's a couple of things at work. One, I think Mr. Kremen mentioned um, the possibility of people not liking the outcome or liking the outcome of the last election and wanting to either change it or lock it in. Um, and I, I don't see the method of election or district only or county-wide necessarily doing either one. It's not really a given. But it certainly would make it more difficult for small individual citizens to run a campaign, I think. Um, on the other hand, though, I do believe that it's probably better to ask the citizens um, about that than to make a decision um, from above. My concern is, and it's the same concern that the, that the uh, commission had, is that although we trust the voters, there is definitely a, some sense of ballot fatigue or something like that when you have so many issues to choose from. If, if all of the uh, measures are put on the ballot, I think they're going to have something like 14 to try to understand. And most of it makes a lot of sense to us, but it's pretty inside baseball for people that just vote and, uh, and then go on about their lives. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Lisa McShane, Bellingham. Uh, I'm speaking in support of this amendment. Um, I support it for a couple of reasons. One, we elected the original freeholders by countywide vote. And there's, there's good reasons for that. A countywide vote means that we elect people who have to think about the best interest of the entire county <coughs> rather than a district. They're accountable to everybody in the county. And that's really important to me regarding the charter. Uh, the charter is our county constitution, and, and it should be treated with care and, and with that level of uh, consideration for all the people in the county. Um, so that's why I support it. I want to address the concern uh, we're hearing regarding the size of the ballot. Um, despite the amendments you're considering in the charter review um, is putting on, I think it's still a relatively short ballot as these things go, um, presidential years. There are a lot of uh, races on the ballot uh, and a lot of initiatives. And the turnout is higher. So generally, when there are more things that are interesting to people on the ballot, people turn out and they think about these things. Uh, I trust the voters, too. I think they will take care and pay attention to this. Um, and I, I know this may seem like inside baseball, but we had, you know, there were 200, 300 people here for this baseball game. And I think there's a lot of interest in how we elect people and how we vote. So anyway, I encourage you to support it. Thanks. Thank you. Ken Weaver, I'm speaking in opposition of this uh, proposed amendment. Uh, we just chipped our teeth for two and a half hours over district-wide voting. So why do you want to go to, to uh, or not district-wide, but for uh, district voting instead of at-large. So now why do we want to go to at-large voting on this issue? If it's good for one, why isn't it good for the other? And the other thing it's, it's going to happen is it's going to turn this into a partisan race. And the other thing is Bellingham is the dog, is the tail that's going to wag the dog. Because, you know, the majority of the county lives in Bellingham. And if you're large, it's all going to be Bellingham-based Commission. So therefore, I'm against this, and I think you ought to think about it. 
Thank you. Brooks Anderson, uh, I want to support this amendment. I think it's an important thing to do now rather than let it go. And people have forgotten all about how the Charter Commission <clears throat> works in 10 years or nine years. I found even though um, I did vote in for the Charter Commission this time around, it was a really uh, difficult process to accomplish. I, there was very little information about it. You had to call in to get your, your, your ballot, and then you had to send the ballot back in by a certain time to a certain place that wasn't where you usually send your ballots. Or am I confusing this? Barbara, you look like you're really that wondering. That was the conservation. Oh, history. I apologize. I apologize then. Yeah. So anyway, I do think you ought to go ahead and uh, put it on the ballot for this time around. I'm sorry about confusing it with the conservation. Thank you. Chris Halterman, Whatcom County. Um, forgive me, I've been scribbling because I generally come here without preformed things, and so I've been taking notes and I hope to be, you know, be cogent and clear. I'm speaking against this amendment. Um, the original charter of the freeholders expected that from time to time a rebalancing of our political system would be needed. Thus, their foresight to have the charter reviewed every 10 years by people elected from each district only because that returns the voice and the vote to everyone as originally attended. The charter clearly states that the charter shall be reviewed by people elected by their district. Please give them their voice, give them their vote, and listen to the voice of the freeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I had something to say to the last one, but I wanted to give you guys a break. So Would I'm you just put gonna, that closer, Cliff? I'm just going to uh, address what we have here. Um, <clears throat> Name first. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Cliff Langley, and um, I was on the Charter Review Commission. And one of the things that um, made the Charter Review Commission really great was the opportunity to debate. And there was people on opposing sides, and, and we got to work things out. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you went through the class that, that they gave on, um, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the, 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 the process that we, that we use um, for our, our forums. But anyway, um, there was a, a quote in that book that said, the best collective decisions are the product of disagreement and contest not consensus and compromise. And I think that if you go to a uh, countywide um, at-large vote for the commission, you're going to eliminate a lot of that debate and a lot of that um, discussion. And I think that it's important. Um, so I'm in District 2. And I think that the paradigm of a lot of the people in District 2 is different than the people in District 1 and the people in District 3. They look at things through a different lens. And if you, if you go to the to, um, countywide at-large voting for the commission, I think that, that you're going to end up with a people that have a similar paradigm, and you're going to eliminate the, the discussion and the, the real um, essence of what we're trying to do and, and find out is there some way better that we can serve the Whatcom County um, through our through our legislative process or through our with our charter um, so I think it really I would really oppose that the idea of doing this thing at, at large um, like Pete said it's worked good in the past the, the previous um, commission was Primarily, uh, well, I know that there was there was less conservatives on it than there was the liberals or thirty uh, seconds, uh, please. But um, in this one, we have more conservatives, so you know that's going to change. So don't 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 put the that this under the at large thing where you're going to get people that have a lot of the same paradigm and eliminate the debate, eliminate the discussion. Um, it needs to be there if you're really going to find out what needs to happen um, in our county. 
Thank you. Bob Van Ortheisen, 7026 Noon Road. I am for district only voting. Uh, we have all the kids from all the county and a lot of kids from the Bellingham School District come out, and I've been doing this for about 35 years now. These kids have no idea. They've never been on the farm. But the most interesting thing is that the mothers that come along and the questions they ask, you know, when do you milk the cow? Well, you know, it's just like a woman. When a woman has babies, she produces milk. And that's what the cow has, the same thing. But they have no idea. How many times do you milk them? I said, three times a day. That's a lot of work. I said, it is a lot of work. So then when we, we might win in our district, which we do a lot, but then when Bellingham votes, and you see, they were all here tonight, we lose. Farmers put a lot of money into the economy in this Whatcom County. So, that's, thank you again. Pete, take care of yourself. Thank you. I'm Chet Dow, and I live in the um, county, out off of East Smith. Um, I would like to echo um, John Mutchler's comments tonight. I also served with him on the Charter Review Commission, and uh, I thought that he did a very good job of summing up some of the problems with this. I really think this, of, of the various ideas out there, this one is a, is a really bad one if you believe in um, having a citizen review of your charter once every 10 years. Uh, the benefit of the way it works currently, uh, I believe John said everybody was able to file as a mini campaign. And if, if you take, if you go to countywide for doing these things, it'll turn into much more akin to what you're used to in, in running for um, a council seat. And even those things now have gotten the point was made more than once earlier this evening, very expensive. And um, uh, I doubt seriously that anybody came even close to $5,000 in, in doing the things that you needed to do. You needed to go out and talk to people um, if you wanted to serve on the commission. And that really, that's the key. So thank you for taking a minute to hear that, uh, I, I would hope you'd reconsider the, that idea and vote it down. Thank you. Thank you. Emily Weaver, 1015 Railroad Avenue. Um, as somebody who has ran in an election for the county council seat 24 years ago, um, I didn't even spend $5,000 then, but I know that uh, Contemplating this race, I was told by one of the political parties this year that I better have $100,000 or I better just go home. And I think uh, I want to just echo kind of what Barbara said. We need to have more people that have the courage to run and run and run and work hard and not spend a lot of money. And to take something like your first step into participatory government by studying the charter and wanting to be part of the constitutional part of our government is really important. And that's like the framework. And people come to that and, and they say, I'd like to participate because they feel really strongly about our system of government, not the individual decisions that are made. And to not let people just put their name on the ballot and think that they're gonna have to run countywide, I can tell you when you make the step up from district-wide to countywide, it's a lot more I drove 8,000 miles in my campaign 24 years ago just to, you know, 8,000 miles on my little Jeep. A lot of walking, a lot of getting around. But if you make the Charter Review, if you really want access to government, then you don't make the Charter Review Commission countywide. It seems contrary to everything that was discussed earlier tonight. But the most important thing is I have yet to see who has proposed <coughs> this amendment. Before you vote on it tonight, I'd like you guys to disclose whose idea this was. Because when something comes <coughs> forward on a real short span of time, the last meeting till this meeting, every single person has the right to know 
who proposed it and where it came from. And without disclosing that, I think you do a disservice to everybody tonight that's watching on TV and listening. So I'd like you to disclose that and really consider how it's going to escalate the cost of the very lowest level of participation. And I think that's really unfortunate, and it's not worth it. You're not going to get better decisions because you spend more money. There's no correlation between campaign spending and sensible people in government. None whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Lorraine Newman, Whatcom County. I would like, like us all to consider that there have been some changes in Whatcom County. And one of them is, is that Bellingham, with its population, and as you are planning for Bellingham's population in the future, is going to be very dense and become a very large populated area, much more so than it has been in the past. And also, Western has grown much. And we have a lot of interested young voters that come from, from the Western Block. And you do get, a, get to a point in counties where those concentrated blocks of people can tip elections forever in only their direction. We see this on a state level with how difficult it is to get past the King County and Pierce County votes if they decide to vote together, those people down there. And for this entry level position, I just think the only way to keep it the closest to all of the people in Whatcom County is to keep it to those districts. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joy Gilfellan, and I'm from Whatcom County. Um, I did not come here to speak on this matter tonight, but I want to reflect on the fact that when I had the choice to vote for Charter Review, I didn't know anything about them. I had to do a little bit of research. And it was incredibly refreshing to me to actually see some old salty dogs there to create a counterweight to a county council and to a political process that's often very political and it's a big, big, big deal to run for countywide office. And I wasn't happy sometimes to attend some of those Charter Review Commission meetings and watch how they were conducted because they were a little messy and they were a little sloppy and there was some harsh words. But you know what? There was some wisdom that came out of some of those folks. And I think that, you know, I would not like to see district-only voting for county council members. But I do think the district-only voting for the Charter Review Commission is really, really has some deep wisdom to it. I would really dislike throwing out some of our solid older citizens to force them to have to campaign across the county when they have wisdom, knowledge, and guts. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Anybody else on this one? If there's anybody else, come on down after this gentleman. Max Perry, Whatcom County, and I would just uh, urge you to leave that as district only voting for the for the charter review, because it, if it goes to countywide, it'll be just just almost like the the council is here, and you get into triple digit uh, expenses on it. And like Chet and and some of the other charter members said, they they spent short form, so it's less than five thousand dollars. So I would just uh, urge you to leave it as. as as uh, district only. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seen? Right. Last person. Carol Perry, Whatcom County. More than uh, I, I think you folks know that my husband and I do listen a lot. We attended all of the charter review meetings, and um, I think more than any other process that we participated in. The Charter Review has been uh, a, a process where we could support our local people. Uh, we knew them. Uh, we went, we listened. Uh, and and I, I just want to commend the first man. <laughs> My thoughts are scattered. I'm sorry. It's getting late. The first man that, that talked 
to this particular um, amendment, I guess it is. He was talking about how important it is that his representative not be far off. And these charter review people were local people. We went and listened to them uh, campaign and so forth, and, and it was scary for them. But to, to make it countywide just doesn't make sense. It, it makes it harder. All the testimony on this has been, except a couple, it has been brilliant, uh, especially the first one and Mr. Mutchler. Please listen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. What is the wishes of the council? Ms. Brenner. Who proposed it? I don't know. I was going to ask that question oh, myself. Okay. Does, does anybody remember which citizen brought this one to us? Yes, it was Mike Estes. Mike Estes, who spoke earlier on the first issue. What's the wishes of the council? Ms. Brenner. Well, I'm going to move everything go on, if it does, but I'll, I'll make a motion to remove it from consideration. Can I do that? No, we need a motion to move approve it, and then you can make that alternate. Oh, we, we have to do that first? Okay, I'm not going to do that. Anybody want to move this one forward? I guess it could just die like that then. Huh. All right. I guess people made some good arguments about letting this one uh, be on hold for a while, at least. Mr. Kremen, did you have something? Well, to say? I just wanted to say that uh, who says we don't listen? <laughs> no, I'm... I well, second that. Ms. Brenner? I will say, if it was voted on to put it on the ballot, I would put it on the ballot. I wouldn't support it, but I still feel like people deserve to vote on if this council body wants to, to move stuff forward to do it. I like it better that nothing happened. <laughs> All right. Seeing no motion and no second, we're just going to move on. That was our last public hearing, unless we want to deal with the other two now. Yes. Mr. Brown. Well, Mr. Chair, I, I um I would like to throw open at least an invitation to see if there's any uh, desire from the community to talk about the other two. If there's no desire, I would suggest it lacks, lacks sufficient support for the council to consider further. Ms. Brenner? Um, this second one, I thought that this, um, I'm not the second one, was it the third one we took off? Yeah. State I'm, I'm just confused about why we have this because it's the law anyway, so we're affirming something that already exists. Yeah. No, well, the, proponent, the proponent from it did ask for it to be withdrawn. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah. The, the, okay. both, both, both the citizens that put these forward and the initiative one. have subsequently asked for them to be withdrawn. Okay. The second one, which was the issue about the 8% initiative, they were not aware of the Charter Review Commission's right. proposal, and having seen that, they felt theirs was it wasn't wasn't necessary. Well, yes, Mr. Kremen. Thank you, and I know that there's been discussion here of whether we should defer or eliminate. But it's my opinion that whether or not the the proponents have withdrawn them privately, whoever they were. Uh, we have put on the agenda these two public hearings, and I think that it's only right to go ahead and see if there's anyone in the audience that want, wants to speak to, either for or against, or neutral on either one of these. And it, it would be my guess that there isn't near the amount of uh, uh, individuals that would like to testify on this on these issues and so I think we could be done in a very timely manner and move on with the rest of our agenda so it'd be uh, I guess I'm asking the chair and the rest of my colleagues if if they would indulge themselves and and go ahead with the advertised public hearings that were on the agenda that I think are that's on the what agenda. Mr. Brown was trying to get at to a yeah. kind so, of a, a sense of how many people want to move forward and I'd like to put these to bed one way or another well so I, I agree uh, with that I just think we need to, to have the public hearings that we said we were going to have. Okay. So, so Mr. Whether Chair, or not we've got 100 people here or five or none. Right. 
Mr. Brown. Mr. Chair, therefore I make a motion to put these back on the agenda for a public hearing. Okay. Now our clerk just asked me to make, to get some clarity on the one we just didn't, that we failed to vote on, that we're not going to bring that back up at some time. So I'm not quite sure how to do that. I'm glad to make a motion that the council has no intention of bringing this to the voters this year. And it's been seconded. So the motion in front of us is not to move ordinance number four that we just talked about, about countywide vote for the Charter Review Commission. Uh, the, the council has no intention of taking that to the voters this year. Any discussion on that? Yeah, I guess. I mean. We're just trying to clarify. There's yeah. people concerned that we're just kind of left it in limbo and at um, our next meeting or on August 4th, we could magically do something with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need okay. to take okay. action. So let's take action. Mr. Mann. So <clears throat> I was planning to vote for this tonight, and I was, I was persuaded seen. by the testimony that we heard uh, opposing it, bringing up very valid points, and, and I was moved by that. And generally, I do support countywide voting, and I, and I, I do want to just mention the, the analogy that was brought up by Mr. Thomas doesn't really work for me because talking about the people in Key West voting for people in Whatcom County, you know, we don't tax those folks. Whatcom County doesn't tax the people in Key West. In Whatcom County, the health department represents the whole county. Everyone in the county pays in to the county budget. And that's why countywide voting makes sense. The analogy of that some far-flung city influencing our elections doesn't hold up uh, as an analogy, so I just wanted to, to point that out. But I think the idea that the costs that will be involved and the, um, I was thinking about the complexity of the ballot, if everybody had to choose the top 15 or whatever uh, charter review members they wanted to vote for, I mean, five out of 10 or whatever was hard enough, you know, 15 out of 30. I, I, I can see some sense in just uh, leaving it uh, th the way it is, and, and I thank the people for for persuading me. Ms. Brenner. Well, I, um, I I just don't think it's relevant, and I you know I'll support whatever you just said because I don't think it's relevant. But if you somebody proposed to forward it, then I would vote to do it, and I don't I don't think we need to change that not just because of what I heard tonight, but I do feel like there's different niches for all kinds of things. But that fellow who said, I guess it got me a little too, brought up Key West or whatever he brought up. We are, Whatcom County is the most local form of government for everybody in this county. And to compare, somebody compared it to, like what if, I'm, I'm sort of a, a populist, so I, I think this representative stuff, especially at the federal and state level, is so broken. They're all just pandering to their own people. You try and write them a letter, they, it bounces back to you because you're not in their district. Um, there is no, you know, great form of government. It's just maybe better than the other alternatives we've had. But without people getting involved in really looking into the issues instead of blindly just following what other people tell them. We're never going to probably have a great form of government. I had to, I want to stick that in just because of the whole thing tonight. Mr. Kremen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the Charter Review Commission members are not like right. we on the council. I mean, they, they, they are, they have one charge. It's, what is it, just several months of actually serving their their constituents and it's not like they have to be running widespread campaigns i think again i think it, it there's nothing wrong with the system we have if i had to make a change an embellishment it would it wouldn't be going to a countywide system i think what we have now is working just fine. If we, if I had to even contemplate making a change, it would be to consider making whatever gets on the ballot would have to be by a supermajority vote of the commissioners, because 
This is, you know, the charter, it's, it's our constitution. And our constitution of the United States is not tinkered with lightly. Very, very seldom do we make changes to the United States Constitution. Well, our charter is our Constitution. And in order for us to make changes, they should be so compelling that there should be a supermajority of the membership of the commission in order for it to go to the voters. I, I, I feel strongly about that. I, I love this county, and I think we've done all in all, and I'm not talking about just us, I'm talking about those before us, have done a pretty good job. We are one of the more coveted counties to live in, to work in, and, and to reside in. And so I don't think we should mess with it and uh, just leave it the way it is. Well, as I say, if you want to make one change, you, even I not made my, I'm not uh, finite on this, and I'm not uh, resigned to, to changing it, but it's something maybe for consideration in the future, making it so that uh, in order for something to get on the ballot, for a, you know, a, to change our charter, it should be done with a supermajority, a two-thirds vote of the, of the commission. But I, I think that's, we can debate that at a later date. Council Member Sidhu. I'll keep it really brief. I think that we should have only district-wise voting for the Charter Commission. But I like uh, what uh, Councilman Crimin has said, that any amendment should be uh, approved by a supermajority of the Charter Commission, but their election should be district-wise. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Brown. Uh, I'll just... Uh, and I think the supermajority requirement should reply, sort of should apply equally to both the council and the charter review commission. Oh, I think that one's coming, yeah. Ms. Brenner. Well, it takes a supermajority of the council to now. No, I'm saying that okay. I think that, that, I that both sure bodies should be governed by the same set of rules because, you know, the last thing we want to do, what we would want to have in this country, is the U.S. Constitution changed by 51 percent of the congressmen. That was my point. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also going to speak in favor of the motion just because I, I, I actually kind of like district-only voting in certain circumstances, especially if the districts are designed well to represent like communities and minority communities. And if you think about this five-district thing we just passed and then district-only voting for the Charter Review Commission, that would be a fascinating makeup there. Um, so. I'm fine holding this. So the motion in front of us is not to forward this to the voters this year. Any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. That passes unanimously. Now we're going to go back to our public hearings we skipped. So the first one is an ordinance proposing an amendment to the Whatcom County Charter to affirm the legislative authority granted to the County Council by the Washington State Constitution. And I believe this one was brought to us by Mr. McShane, um, who has asked that it be withdrawn. Um, so I am going to find my sheets. I don't think many people signed up for these, but we will go through this as quick as we can. So I'm going to open the public hearing. And the, uh, why don't just anybody that wants to speak to this one come down. And, and Mr. McShane, you'd be a, an appropriate one to kick this off. <clears throat> Dan McShane, 1451 Grant Street. Uh, again, thank you for uh, introducing it a couple weeks ago. Uh, the reason I asked for it to be withdrawn was that it is consistent with the whereas is in there for be it ordained. Um, partly I wanted to emphasize to the council, which clearly the council understands, that you do have the authority to propose charter amendments as per the state constitution. Uh, the actual language, though, that was initially put forward of how that would play out on the charter was modified from what I originally proposed mm -hmm. to where I think, Ms. Brunner, you noted, it kind of made it moot. You, you understand your position. Um, I was a little bit more aggressive in that that I thought that there may be only the council has that authority. Uh, I think that is consistent with the state constitution. 
but it's kind of a conflict that you're, I think, struggling with a little bit yourselves. Um, and maybe there's some alternative approaches to that, which I think we're being alluded to by Mr. Kremen, and I hope you would consider that approach uh, as well. Um, and it kind of resolves this, this dilemma. So that's why I asked for it to be withdrawn. I have no problem if you do what you just did on that one. So thank you. All right. Anybody else on this one? Oh, come on. We were hoping for an hour and a half or so. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. What are the wishes of the council? Oh. So it, we can't just withdraw it? We could vote it down, or we could do the same as we did last time, I guess. I, I kind of like to just withdraw something rather well, to, than... To get it on the table. Well, uh, I, my problem is... I like putting stuff on the ballot. This doesn't make sense. I'll admit it. But I, you know, I kind of always do it that way, which made me a little uncomfortable with that last vote. I move so, approval, Mr. Chair. Approval of what? Move approval of the ordinance. Just to get it on the table so we can vote okay. it down. Oh, second. gotcha. All right, I'll second it. Just okay, so, we can so vote it's it been down. moved and it's been seconded by Mr. Mann. Now, do the two people that moved it want to speak against it? <laughs> Let's dispatch with this. Yes, I think I think the the proposer of the of this uh, issue before us gave a good explanation why we need to vote it down. All right. Any other discussion, Mr. Brown? This is just a point of uh, procedure. The, the last one we voted is a um, a voice vote, not a roll call vote. And was that correct? And what do we do on this one? It's much cleaner for us if we do what we're doing with this one if we would have done that with the last one. However, because it wasn't actually a vote on the ordinance itself with the last motion, it was okay to do a voice okay. vote rather than roll call. As long as we're in compliance with proceeding. Right. All right, so we have the ordinance in front of us. Any other discussion? I guess we're ready for the roll call. Pete Kremen? No. Ken Mann? No. Satpal Sadhu? No. Carl Weimer? No. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? No. Barry Buchanan? No. So that fails six to one with Ms. Brenner in favor. And uh, the last hearing of the evening is an ordinance proposing an amendment to the Whatcom County Charter to align requirements for amending the Whatcom County Charter by citizen initiative with the Washington State law. And this one was brought to us. It would re reduce the number of signatures down to 8%. Um, the person who brought this one to us has asked that it be withdrawn, too, because she didn't realize that the Charter Review Commission had already forward, is planning to forward one on to us that r takes it down to 15%, and she didn't want to confuse the voters with two dueling proposals. So I'm going to open the public hearing. Anybody want to speak to us about citizen initiative? We're close. Mr. Mutchler. Yeah, I, this is a, an example where the commission came together both sides. It was, it was uh, Commissioner Donovan and myself that brought this initiative. We weren't quite as aggressive as the citizen. We went from 20 to 15 percent because we think changing the charter is a big deal. It should be a rather high bar. Since I have about 40 seconds left, I would like to speak against the supermajority of having the commission be able to pass amendments for the very simple reason that it's appropriate for you we folks you because you meet every session. year, year after year, and eventually you can get that supermajority. The commission meets every 10 years, and it's it's more difficult for that to happen. So I would I would think that it's a little bit different apples to oranges here. So thank you for your time. You're on to the, our, a different hearing. Yes, <laughs> <But> totally <laughs> not. Mr. McShane. Dan McShane, 1451 Grant Street, Bellingham. Um, I'm not really speaking for or against either way. Uh, I think that it was recognized, hey, you know, that the Charter Commission was recommending dropping it to 15 percent. The proposal before you was 8 percent. Uh, at the risk of uh, speaking for your county's attorney, uh, I did go to the Charter Review Committee meeting yesterday, and the response I heard was that if both were to pass, that the more liberal I guess 8% uh, would be the one that would prevail. 
uh, so that it really isn't competing. So there's that mm. option there, just so yeah, sure. just the, the risk of mucking it up for you. And your feet, so. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Burr. Bob Burr, Bellingham. I am a populist. Therefore, I like an initiative requirement that allows 8% of us to get something on the ballot rather than 15%. And I am particularly in favor of it now that Mr. McShane has pointed out that the more liberal of the two, if they both passed, would be the law. All right. Thank you. Adam Charles Law. Welcome. And I agree with Mr. Burr. I agree with Mr. McShane. I think we need more amendments on the ballot. And this one in particular uh, resonates with me because instead of 15%, 8% has more representation within parties. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Chris Alterman, Whatcom County. Um, less percentage of passage for an initiative means less need of a county council because our county will be pretty much run by initiative rather than by council. Passing an initiative should be a high hurdle. It should not be made a populist vote. It needs to be done the way it's being done. You're elected as a council by the entirety. <clears throat> An initiative that passes with 8%, why do we need a council that's running a county by the seat of the pants? We need consistency, something that the business <coughs> and government can plan for and not have a low bar threshold to just change everything. I'm sorry, I, I would really ask that you vote against this. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Todd Donovan, Bellingham. Uh, there's actually two measures that the Charter Commission has already approved about initiative signatures. One is for simple ordinances to bring it down to the statewide equivalent of 8%. There's a second one to have uh, the initiatives for a Charter Commission, or sorry, a Charter Amendment from 20 to 15% that Commissioner Mushler was talking about. So to add a third one on there to bring the chart, this one I assume is it's a proposal, bring the charter initiative from 20 to 8 percent would leave us with three things that I think would be a, a bit confusing. Um, we've already got two changes on there that will <clears throat> make it closer to state standards, uh, equal to state standards for a, a, or a simple ordinance. The idea was to have a higher threshold for the charter and, uh, um, um, changes. To bring the charter changes from what is now 20% to 8% would be a pretty radical change, so I, I would hope you'd pull this one. And it also just to simplify things and not have potential uh, conflicts. Thanks. Thanks for that clarity. Ms. Harris. Um, I'm a little confused after listening to Todd, and I'm wondering if this can be held over for um, the next council meeting. Um, or if that just pushes it to the next year, because I'm in favor of things in general that require the least amount of, of percentage of, of the voting public. Anyone who's been out there trying to get signatures knows how hard it is. And I can tell you 8% is not a walk in the park. It's a lot of work. And you have to reach a lot of people. And there has to be pretty strong support for that kind of grassroots kind of movement to galvanize and get 8% of the signatures. So um, the other thing is I don't understand this concern about it's too radical to go from 15 to 8. Well, so? What, what's what's the problem with that? Why sometimes we need radical changes. A lot of times we need radical changes and we don't get it. So I'd like to hear um, a justification that's a little uh, has a little more to it than just it's a big change. So um, I would like some. I if we have to vote on this <coughs> now, I would like to move forward with the. Um, proposal that's the lower amount and if it's possible to wait I, w I would like to hold this over till the next meeting I know I'm tired and I'd like a chance to look at this thank you thank you
Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roll my eyes at you. <laughs> okay, so um, this was one where we had a lot of debate, and we did come up with a near consensus, if not a consensus, on the number 15. Um, it's one of the place, few places in this charter review where we actually uh, came to terms with what this meant. And we did take a lot of time in debating whether or not 15 was the right number. Um, and our, our, my true thought, I'll just speak for myself, was that you would really get, um, if you went down to eight, you'd have two warring factions constantly putting things on the ballot if you made that threshold too low for the charter. Um, so we, as we discussed it around the table, um, came to a near consensus about whether that, uh, that number was a correct number. And so I'm going to encourage you to leave it at the 15 number if you would. Thanks. Thank you. Linda Twitchell, um, I happened to talk today to Debbie Elstein, and I asked her, what is 8%? Um, the last governor vote was two year, in 2012, roughly 100,000 people in Whatcom County voted. So we're talking about a petition of 8,075 people, just so you know the number. I, I wanted to speak last because I actually had a, a question here. We mentioned... Uh, if two of these went on the ballot, which would win? And it occurred to me to ask the first action tonight, what if both the county charter commission proposal and the one that we decide to put on the ballot tonight for five districts, what if they're both approved? They're not either ors, right? What happens if a majority vote? For I can't both? think of one that's in conflict. They're, they're not compatible. Conflict. They're compatible? Okay, well, doesn't the county charter one say three districts? No. no it doesn't. Okay, okay, no. I'm clear on that then. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to close this public <coughs> hearing. What are the wishes of the council? Well, we have to move approval. I move approval. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Mr. Kremen. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, but government should not be that easy to change. Government by initiative. I believe in the initiative process. I believe in the citizens having the ability to have initiative. But it should be a high bar. The legislative body, whether you're talking about the state, whether you're talking about Whatcom County, governing by initiative is not a good way to govern. There's no give and take. The initiatives are almost always put together by one side or another side without any concern or consideration for any opposing view. It's an all or nothing. That's not the way our government was meant to be. It should, it should be difficult. And you also don't want to create a situation where it's easier for whatever legislative body you're talking about, in our case it's the county council, to punt. And then another, because uh, that's what we're seeing, I've seen at the state level, where, you know, 35 years ago, it was very rare that you'd get an initiative. Very rare. Now, both sides, both the both the Republicans and the Democrats are afraid to do anything and initiatives come along that are most often determined by who has the money and who's supporting what side. And then the, the, the last point I want to make is, is that to be candid, and this is not to be disparaging of the electorate, but I would say 98 if percent, if not higher, of those that vote on initiatives have not read the initiative, they, and even if they have read it, don't understand it anyway, and I just think it's a poor way to govern, and I, I'm not saying that the bar should be extremely high, but to get 8,075 votes or, you know, less than 9,000 votes in Whatcom County is, I, signatures is not, that's, is, is just not a high enough bar, and it's, it just is going to lead to an inferior way to govern, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm going to be uh, 
against this proposal. Council Member Mann. I agree entirely with Mr. Kremen. I just moved it forward so we could vote it down. You, oh. Ms. Brenner. Well, you know, sticking with the yes vote, um, you kind of actually, I just don't like the argument that people aren't going to read it and they're not going to understand it. And they have a choice of not voting on something or voting no. Um, I, I think putting it on the ballot, you know, I'm not sure I'm, how I'd vote on it, but because um, I did an initiative when you needed the high percentage, and um, but I was doing it on my own. And if you're talking about groups, organizations, political parties, they're going to spend the money no matter what. To me, this makes it more accessible for a real citizen initiative, not for, you know, the big guys to do it. So um, I'm going to support it. Put it on the ballot. Any other discussion? Ready for the roll call. Ken Mann? No. Satpal Sadhu? No. Carl Weimer? No. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? No. Barry Buchanan? No. Pete Kremen? No. So that fails six to one with Ms. Brenner in favor. And I think our, our auditor has a, a few words of wisdom about all this voting and stuff for us. <laughs> all this voting? No, not wisdom, but just a point of information. It took me a second to find it in the charter, but uh, when you were deliberating about whether or not to consider that you needed to affirm your legislative authority to pass amendments, Section 8.20 that describes what you do for charter amendment general provisions, the first sentence is, charter amendments may be proposed by the commission, the county council, or by the public. So you've got the authority. Thank you. All right, we are done with all our public hearings. We're gonna move right into our open session. This is where anybody can come and talk to us about whatever they want.